All right, why do we do a research proposal? What's the point of those? Well, if you want to do any kind of investigative research, you need money, money, well, lots of money. So no one's going to just give somebody a whole heap of money to be able to do research. What you need to do is a proposal that shows them what you would actually do in that research. And then they summarise that, they read through that, and then they decide if they will give money to you to do your research. The first thing you need to do in your research proposal is outline your research problem or question. So what is your research question? What are you trying to what are you trying to research? What are you trying to figure out? And when you do that, describe the expected results as well. So start introducing your topic broadly. So look at research that has already been conducted in the past and go from there. You need to look for limitations of the research studies that have already been conducted by people and published and then evaluate those limitations that were in those previous research studies. You need to find something that hasn't already been researched and published. So identify and explain how your research will contribute beyond what is already known and then state your research aims and move logically from one general piece of information to more specific information on your topic. Once you've provided an, a research question, what you then need to do is introduce the general information about what it is you are proposing to research. You need to analyse and critically review the relevant literature. Now, not all assessment tasks will ask you to do a literature review, so make sure you double check on your rubric whether or not you need to include that. You need to identify how your proposed research will contribute to what is already known and extend scientific research in this field. So basically, as we can see there, research is to see what everybody else has seen and to think what nobody else has thought. If you are required to do a literature review, what you need to do is inform the reader in general terms why you want to carry out your research. So what problem is it helping to solve and why is this important? And identify your proposed area of research. You can also in this literature review define any key terms that you want to focus on throughout your proposal and then set the scene for the reader. When you review current literature, in your literature review, you should outline any work of previous researchers in your chosen area and mention some of their findings and conclusions. Again, if you don't or you're not required to do a literature review, you don't need to do this part. The following information for, you, for your research question and your hypothesis is a must for all research proposals. So, Firstly, state what your research question is. You need to have a dependent, which is a variable measured, and an independent variable. So that is your variable that you change. And it must be identified specifically. So below are some examples that you could use and change the wording to meet your required topic. Dependent variable is the behavior the experimenter measures to see if the manipulation of the independent variable had an effect. And for the independent variable, you want to double check that the, the variable that is specifically manipulated or changed by an experimenter to observe its effects on the dependent variable. So make sure you think about how you are measuring the dependent variable. So you want to look for both quantitative and qualitative data um, and then what is expected in your results. Helping you out there with the hypothesis. So that basically is to include a statement here about the expectant, expected sorry, findings of your study. You need to identify the variables and you can re write a simple prediction. So if this happens, blah, 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 then this blah, 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 blah will happen. So in that sort of form. So the first part of the sentence states the independent variable and the second part states the dependent variable. 
All right, so we want to create new knowledge. So have a look at what has already been done and you want to try and identify or research something that leads on from somebody else's work. But it needs to be new knowledge. If you forget what the independent and dependent variables are, then just go back to the previous slide where it's outlined. This next section depends again on the actual task. So sometimes you won't need to do the risk, a risk assessment um, and sometimes you will. So again, double check the rubric just to make sure what you need to do. So if you need to complete a risk assessment, you can do that and attach it to the back of your assessment, like an append or as in a, an appendix. Um, if you don't need to do a risk assessment, and again, double check your rubrics, then you can go into the methodology. Okay, so when designing your research proposal, you must consider the elements of a fair test and the parameters of conducting this investigation in a normal school or laboratory. Describe how you propose to conduct your study. Describe the equipment you want to use, so apparatus and materials, and the safety precautions that need to be considered. Your method, and if needed, risk assessment, but mainly your method, should include sufficient detail to allow a reviewer to assess whether the project that you are proposing is feasible and that you have thought of the detailed issues in setting up of the project. Make sure to include what chemicals or biological things that you plan to use and how many repetitions you plan to do and over what time period the results will be collected. Do you plan to use a single method or a range of methods? Do you plan to compare methods? Are you able to collect both quantitative and qualitative data? And do you require particular resources? Still with the methodology, you need to explain the measurements, so quantitative, that you want to use to collect from your data and how you will collate that data, quantitative and qualitative. You can provide a sample results table labelled correctly in the results section. For the purpose of a research proposal, you do not need to use past tense in your methodology. You also need to make sure that you describe step by step how you intend to carry out the study. Did you have an experimental and a control group? Why? Remember, you're just proposing this. It's a research proposal. So if you were to do this research, would you have an experimental group and a control group? If so, why? And to finish off your research proposal, you need to have a discussion, or sometimes it's called an evaluation. But you won't have any of your own results to analyse here, so don't worry about that. What you do need is to assess how your research study would address the strengths and gaps or limitations in the literature that you've already identified. You must refer to your methodology and your expected predicted results. Critically analyse. The link between your research proposal and the actual topic that you are doing. Um, for example, here is chemotaxis in the human body. Did your research proposal set out to find what you wanted? Explain how scientific knowledge and the results you propose to obtain in this area may be beneficial for scientists to offer valid explanations in areas such as, this is again examples, helping couples with infertility, reducing rheumatoid arthritis in the human body, or you might wanna look at it with climate change and how we can reduce the effects or even increase things like photosynthesis and its benefits. You also need to provide enough detail so that your teacher can assess whether the project is significant and well-planned and thus likely to be successfully executed.
And the last things you need to include or make sure you've got are the references. So double check the word count as well. Depending on your task, you may need appendices, you may not. So again, double check the rubric. So the reference section lists in alphabetical order by the last name of the first author or published information that was referred to in the scientific report. This section provides the reader with the information needed to access the original sources. Please note that the reference list includes only those references that were actually cited within the text. Any other information that you may have read concerning the problem but did not mention or cite in text in the paper should not be included in your reference list. This is why the section is called references instead of bibliography. References are always the last section of your paper. When referencing, it should be completed in APA 7 style, current version, for this report. Please refer to the library portal page for the appropriate format for the reference list if you are not sure. The reference list should contain at least three additional peer-reviewed articles. So that's just resources that you've looked at. Um, and not including any of the ones that we provide if need be. They need to be referenced using correct APA 7 format and placed in alphabetical order. Make sure your resources are reputable and you have in-text reference throughout your entire research proposal. Good luck.